Is the scientific belief that the universe was created by a Big Bang and that we are all just an accident of nature a fact or a matter of faith? Are scientists ignoring evidence that they have uncovered that prove the universe could not possibly have come about by chance? Let's discuss. In the early chapters of human history, the quest for knowledge was not a battlefield divided by the wire of science and religion. Rather, it was a harmonious journey of discovery. Figures such as Galileo, Copernicus, and Einstein, who are synonymous with scientific breakthroughs, were also deeply spiritual individuals. They saw their scientific pursuits not as a rebellion against the divine, but as a quest to understand the mind of God. In fact, the phrase Big Bang was first proposed in 1927 by Georges Lemaire, a Roman Catholic priest and physicist. The concept that birthed modern cosmology was not born out of atheism, but from scientists of faith who sought to understand the cosmos. However, over the past few decades, the relationship between science and religion has undergone a seismic shift. Science and religion, once the best of friends, now seem to be at loggerheads. A significant portion of the scientific community identifies as atheists and views those who believe in God as deluded, often dismissively referring to them as creationists. This disdain stems from the fundamental difference between science and religion. Science demands evidence, proof, and repeatability. If a physicist proposes a new theory, it is scrutinized, tested, and only accepted if it passes rigorous verification. Scientists follow where the data leads, and scientists believe as devoutly as any person of a traditional religion that the data points towards a universe birthed by the Big Bang. According to this theory, the universe expanded rapidly from a single point. Stars formed from initial matter, and these stars created all the atoms we have discovered. The atoms were then scattered throughout the universe in great supernova explosions, eventually creating us and all life on Earth. This narrative leaves no room for a supreme being or a purposefully designed universe. We are, according to this belief, just a fluke, an accident of nature, an anomaly. But is this belief in an accidental universe really evidence-based, or is it a faith of its own? Despite its wide acceptance, the Big Bang Theory has major flaws and gaps that scientists themselves have uncovered, but have yet to explain. Could it be that in their firmly held faith in this theory, scientists are ignoring evidence that points towards a created universe? In this video series, we'll explore this provocative question. Are scientists being hypocritical by dismissing those who believe in a creator, while they themselves cling to a theory that has gaps and unexplained aspects as big or bigger than any holy book of a traditional religion. In the next episode, we'll delve into the intriguing possibility that scientists have uncovered evidence of a created universe, but are blind to it because it doesn't align with their faith in the Big Bang Theory. For more on our cosmic origins, consider delving into the book, A Chorus of Big Bangs, available on Amazon. And remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and share your thoughts in the comments section. The cosmos may be vast, but it's discussions like these that make it feel a little closer to home. As we discussed previously, the pursuit of knowledge on how the universe was created was initiated by scientists who were theists and who were trying to understand the mind of God. But in recent decades, the situation has changed dramatically. Most scientists are now atheists and trust in the Big Bang Theory to explain the creation of the universe as devoutly as any believer in a traditional religion. But is atheism based on evidence or is it a belief system that relies on faith as much as any other? Let's explore. There is a fundamental question that neither believers in the Big Bang Theory or believers in a created universe are able to address. And that is, how did the universe originate? Where was the beginning? And who began it? Scientists postulate that the universe was created out of a singularity, but scientists have no idea what a singularity is or where it came from. Basically, the universe was created out of nothing, but surely nothing can come from nothing. Conversely, if the universe had a creator, where did the creator come from? There seems to be no satisfactory answer to that question either, but maybe there is evidence that the universe was created. Let's dig a bit deeper. Scientists point out that the latest technology and new discoveries allow them to understand the workings of our universe as never before. They believe that the operation of the universe is just a matter of physics and mathematical formulas, 
and that certain laws of nature create stars. The stars provide light and energy. And if there is a planet within the habitable zone of that star, and if that planet has the right conditions, then it may be able to generate life. Scientists believe that once life begins, then it's just a matter of time before evolution allows sentient beings such as us to emerge. All very simple and no need to invoke a creator who designed the heavens and us human beings with any particular purpose. However, this scientific narrative has a lot of gaps and flaws which we have explored in previous videos. One of the fundamental gaps is why do the laws of nature work as they do? Why are the mathematical formulas that allow the universe to exist so precisely set? Why are values of the strength of gravity, the speed of light, the strong nuclear force, the value of neutrino mass, and many, many others set to unimaginable degree to allow the universe to exist? Scientists do not know, and they accept that these laws could not possibly have come about by chance. But they are not willing to concede that since they do not know, and chance is out of the question, then a possible logical conclusion is that someone made these laws of nature exactly as they needed to be. That it's conceivable that the universe has a designer. Instead, scientists come up with flimsy and exotic theories like the anthropic principle or the multiverse theory to explain away all the fine tuning. This seems reminiscent of people who believe in a flat earth, but discover evidence to indicate the earth is actually round but their belief system is so strong that they are not able to accept the evidence presented. Are scientists being hypocritical by accusing people of traditional religions of believing in something on faith? Since they themselves refuse to accept evidence that is right in front of them because it does not align with their own personal beliefs. Add your thoughts in the comments section below. And please, like and subscribe. In the next video we will discuss life on Earth and why we human beings are maybe special and not a fluke of nature and evolution. In the meantime, search out the book A Chorus of Big Bangs on Amazon for more information on our cosmic origins. In our previous segment, we discussed how scientists themselves have uncovered evidence that the natural laws that govern the universe and allow it and us to exist are so precisely set that they could not have possibly come about by chance. But scientists are willing to blind themselves to this evidence as it contradicts their belief in a universe created out of nothing by no one. Perhaps one of the main reasons scientists are so emboldened in their belief that the universe and we human being are just an accident of nature and have no purpose is due to a famous book published in 1859. Charles Darwin's theory of the origin of species by means of natural selection took the scientific world by storm and is the basis on which scientists view how life began and evolved on planet Earth. In its own way, Darwin's theory of evolution is as influential as the Big Bang theory in the scientific community. The theory postulates that species have evolved and changed over time, that new species come from pre-existing species, and that species share common ancestors. This has led scientists to conclude that we human beings are part of this evolutionary process and that we too evolved to who we are today from ancient ancestors, and that we were not created by any supreme being. The origin of species is viewed as gospel and accepted as a factual account of how life evolved rather than just a theory. But like the Big Bang Theory, the origin of species also has some major gaps and flaws. Let's discuss a few of them. First and foremost is the question of how life began. Darwin's theory takes over after life has begun, but does not provide any commentary on what began life in the first place. Neither has science since come up with any satisfactory answer to that question. Similar to what caused the Big Bang, what caused life to start is a complete mystery to science. Secondly, research has shown that although small evolutionary changes are possible at the micro level, no fossil evidence has been found to show how evolution instigates changes at the macro level like from a shrew to a whale or reptile to a mammal, a lot of extrapolations have occurred from very little fossil evidence. Third is why do we have consciousness? Why are we able to think? Why are we able to contemplate our very existence? There is no evolutionary reason for us to do so. It's almost as if someone designed us to be this way, designed us to be able to think, to make moral decisions, to decide right from wrong, to believe or not to believe in a creator, this is where the theory of evolution falls short. 
The theory is not complete and cannot be relied upon as proof that we are simply a product of evolution or that there is no purpose to our existence. Please share your thoughts in the comments below and like and subscribe. For more information, please check out the book A Chorus of Big Bangs, which explores our cosmic origins in more detail on the Amazon site of your country. Previously, we discussed how Darwin's theory of evolution cannot be relied upon to provide the answers to why we exist or how life arose on Earth. Now let's zoom out further and look at why planet Earth is even able to support life. Any life. Only a few decades ago, scientists had no evidence that planets outside of our solar system even existed. But recent advances in technology are now providing proof that there are planets circling other stars. Scientists have discovered thousands of these planets. Some are exactly the right distance from their suns and are in the habitable zone where life can arise. Based on extrapolation of the current figure, scientists believe there are millions of what they call habitable exoplanets. The logical scientific argument postulates that even if life arose on a small percentage of these exoplanets, then it's quite possible that there are thousands of other civilizations out there. The conclusion being that we and the Earth are nothing special, we are just a statistical fluke. But how valid is this argument? Let's consider. This discussion is based on our perception of Earth's position in what we call the Goldilocks zone. This is a habitable circumstellar area around a star where conditions are neither too hot nor too cold, allowing the existence of liquid water on a planet's surface. Water is a crucial component for life, suggesting that exoplanets within similar Goldilocks zones might also have water and potentially life. Nonetheless, residing in the habitable zone is just the initial step in a series of factors that facilitates Earth in sustaining life. Otherwise, both Venus and Mars could harbor life as they are also deemed to lie within this zone. Earth, however, is unique due to a range of elements that haven't been found in any exoplanet to date. For instance, Earth possesses a magnetic field, an unseen force that shields our planet from detrimental solar radiation, ensuring the sustenance of life here. The ozone layer, situated in the Earth's stratosphere, is another crucial feature that sets Earth apart. It absorbs the majority of the sun's damaging ultraviolet radiation, preventing it from reaching the surface and thus safeguarding life. The existence of plate tectonics significantly contributes to Earth's habitability by enabling the recycling of carbon dioxide, preventing an uncontrolled greenhouse effect, and maintaining Earth's temperature at a life-supporting level. The moon also plays a vital role in steadying Earth's rotational axis, leading to a stable climate and predictable seasons, which have been instrumental in life's evolution and development. Even our sun is distinctive. If it were more red or blue, plants couldn't utilize sunlight for photosynthesis. Earth's rotational period is optimal. If it were longer, the nighttime and daytime temperature difference would be too extreme. If shorter, the speed of atmospheric wind would be too rapid. All these factors, combined with others such as the axial tilt of the Earth, strength of gravity, and the positioning of Jupiter and Saturn, contribute to why Earth is so unique. There are many other examples of why the Earth is special and maybe the only planet designed to harbor and bring about intelligent life. Intelligent life that is capable of asking questions of its origins. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section and please like and subscribe. For more information, please check out the book, A Chorus of Big Bangs, which explores our cosmic origins in more detail on the Amazon side of your country. It has been very easy in the past, and unfortunately with the advent of the internet and social media, in our current times as well, to make up some conspiracy theory, for example, make it go viral and have people believe in it without understanding or querying the source and whether it is true or not or even if there is any evidence for it to be true. Truth and facts are harder and harder to decipher from all the information now bombarded at us from so many directions. So cosmologists, physicists, astronomers, astrophysicists, scientists, all these seekers of knowledge and truth are to be admired, so many of whom dedicate their whole lives carrying out research, conducting experiments, and coming up with theories and predictions that expand the knowledge of humanity. They stand on the shoulders of giants of the past and attempt to see further than we as a species have ever seen before. The problem, though, is that scientists are human beings, 
and like all human beings, they are fallible. They have views that are not always balanced. They take positions on certain matters. They form conclusions on insufficient data. They have their own pet theories that they expound on with the surety of any fundamentalist. Despite the time and effort scientists expend on their research, they don't always come to the correct conclusions. Some views are so strongly held that they are willing to misinterpret or overlook or just plainly ignore any data they have found that does not align with their theories and beliefs. As we have discovered in our series of videos, one such area where the data is leading them where they don't want to go is the story of our origins, and they find ways not to go there despite the evidence being right in front of them. And the evidence is that there is a very strong possibility that the universe had a creator. It simply cannot have come about by chance. The odds that the universe came into being out of nothing just by chance are so astronomical that there are more zeros in the odds than the human mind can comprehend. This statement is not conjecture, but is a fact accepted by the scientific community based on accumulated evidence over decades. But their strongly held beliefs cannot and will not allow scientists to consider that there is at least the possibility that the universe had a creator. Maybe not the creator as described in traditional holy books, but a creator nonetheless. Like the flat earthers who, instead of considering the evidence and accepting that there is at least the possibility that the earth is round, scientists are sticking to their preconceived notions of a universe created just by chance out of nothing. And they come up with more and more ingenious and wildly speculative theories like the anthropic principle or the multiverse that cannot be proven or disproven to continue to keep their faith. Scientists view people who believe in a created universe based on their faith as naive at best or deluded fools at worst. They are looked down upon in a patronizing way and are referred to disparagingly as creationists. But are not scientists doing the same when it comes to believing in a universe created out of nothing by no one? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. For more information, please check out the book A Chorus of Big Bangs which explores our cosmic origins in more detail on the Amazon side of your country.